Amy, I am so excited that you are here. I am very excited to be here with you, Shilpa. Thanks for having me. Of course, yes. You are doing some incredible things. I've been following some of the social media about your aromatherapy and ar aromatherapy gardening. Maybe you could start off by telling our audience about your journey from corporate to how you arrived to where you are. Thanks for asking because it's, um, I find the more we share our stories, the more we are like, oh, I could do that, or I didn't think about that. But um, I was a lifelong gardener. I have a fond picture of myself, probably like four or five years old, squatting in the garden with a trowel, a big smile on my face. And I was always hiking around in the Hudson Valley of New York in the swamps, fascinated by skunkweed and butterfly uh, milkweed. So it was a part of me, part of my mother, part of my grandmother, you know, and um, I always found a way to have gardening in my life or plants in life, even when I had my own apartment in Western New York, had no money, I was going to uh, junior college. I did that so I didn't have to take the SATs. I don't believe in standardized testing, that's another thing. Uh, and then I had this garden with no money and I saw my neighborhood change. It was like a crack neighborhood, literally. I had like no money. And I noticed some flowers appeared around like across the street from me and a neighbor who I never would have interacted with came and spoke with me. I was like 19 years old. I planted an herb garden like when I was in high school. I moved to New York City and I felt disconnected and I knew it. I literally was ungrounded. I was living four stories up and I knew I needed plants. I could fast forward and just say aromatherapy to me is my way to connect with nature when I'm living in an urban environment. And that's my message to a lot of people. But I always found a way to go to the botanical gardens, to walk through parks, look at nature, look at the sky. So corporate was great. I was in market research. I worked at a global bank at the end. And I just all the time, I'd look at that bank in downtown Manhattan and say, I don't belong here. And uh, you don't do it alone. My spouse is very supportive. So thanks to him, you know, uh, I quit. And then I thought I'd become a personal organizer. That didn't happen. I didn't want my own business. And here I have my own business right now. Anyway, the aromatherapy found me. The oils found me and I was curious about them. Who are they? What are they? What's this process? And then I was just eager, couldn't tell you why. I was obsessed. I must become certified. And then suddenly I became certified. I was asked to teach. I was teaching certification. And suddenly I have my own business. And part of that whole thing is um, plants and being with plants and aromatic gardening. Like, what's she talking about? She lives in New York. I have a house on Long Island as well with my husband. So I garden every weekend, you know. So I just shared a lot. I feel like I was babbling, but that's my journey. I said, hold on, because I realized that I was on mute. No, you're not babbling. I, I'm finding this. <laughs> really fascinating and when you use the word grounding and it helped you ground that is something that's implicitly so part of my heart like I love I actually practice grounding I go into my backyard I walk barefoot every morning and I do it for a variety of reasons one of them is that the moment I started doing it it was like a light switch went off mm -hmm. and I can truly connect with you over the fact that it helps you and then just sometimes when I'm in the backyard I just smell the flowers and smell the greens so tell me more about that tell me about the essence of what connected you to the the earth that's I mean it really is the plants um, and like I mentioned the essential oils in their really concentrated nature from the aromatic plants that's just a way of connecting and communication with plants. Yes. And I just want to pause and share something that, um, speaking of groundedness, something I, I realized was super important to me when, I, when I'm teaching. I was wearing like heeled boots for a while and then like combat boots. You know, I have a certain style, whatever. And I was like, this isn't working. So often I, when teaching, I take my shoes off. 
when I see clients at home, because I practice from home and I do individual sessions, I always have been seated on the floor. I never have my shoes on and people will always join me on the floor. And there is literally something like you touched upon about to need to be on the ground, whether it's your wood floor or outside, there is a need for that. And wearing high heels is ridiculous, but that's another topic. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the topic of like the senses though, you, essentially when you talk about essential oils, you're talking about the essence of what you're feeling in your, 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 your body. And then when you touch the ground, you're feeling it. I feel like all of that is so healing. Tell me more about the healing aspect of what transitioned you. Yeah, part of it, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a long story, but it's so much of just, I needed to be with the plants and I'm never happier than with my hands in the soil and you know, working with the essential oils. They're these, I'm gonna hold up a vial of a blend here. Yes. They're really abstract things. They're, all you need is one little drop of something on a cotton pad to sh have a mind shift yeah. and the sensorial nature like you're describing like that is vital to aromatic gardening to working with essential oils to overall wellness because if i'm not paying attention and i'm not touching i'm not smelling and that's part of it to be in your body and to have these experiences so if i could just segue into the aromatic gardening part one vital part is that you can go to your yard and maybe you have peppermint. Many people have heard of peppermint, so it's not a stranger. You can go, you might kind of smell it, but it's like an interactive garden where you're almost forced to brush against it or take a leaf and crush it. And then you get those oils on your hands and then that's magical. Yes. So part of it, a big part is the sensorial interactive nature of the aromatic plants and plus again soil seeing a butterfly go by you know being in the sun it's this big picture and i love putting my hands in soil and working in in my backyard and we have a trail where i live in southern california we have a lot of um like trails that are more earthy like along the soil uh, i'm going to come up with the right word in a moment but essentially there's this a lot of um eucalyptus trees along the pathway mm. and when you break the tr the leaves oh that smell that 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 breaks into your hand it it feels it feels so oh my gosh i just i feel like it takes you back home because growing up in india because i was i was raised partially in india we eucalyptus oils are part of our culture and mm. so I think that some of those things take you back to a different point, point in time. Yeah, you're touching on a really powerful part of the aromatherapy experience, which you are describing. You are walking, you see the plant, you crush it, and that is aromatherapy. It's those oils, right? Yes. And it's, it's just delicious. It's Sorry, like, I just got sidetracked in my mind's eye, like no, no, visualizing like I, I, a trail I, of you. I, I actually feel it in my heart. Does that does that feel real? I it like yeah. I I feel it right here in my heart. Like when I crush the leaves, mm. and or like I drink lemon water every morning, and when I crush, and that aroma of the lemon goes into my or I I cr I crush fresh ginger mm. into warm water. It you feel the healing vibrations yeah and the vibrations on a level and literally the molecular activities happening of those volatile oils interacting with what you're saying there's a i love how you said it goes into your heart because if you sit with a aromatic plant or it's a concentrated essential oil there's many levels of things happening and one of them like you said is memory recall and memory which is very important because we're human, right? It's a, it's scent is a really highly integrated into memory. And the way you described like touching your heart, when you, my heart. yeah, when you sit with an aromatic plant, it's not really just taking the bottle of oil and smelling it, which is powerful, 
you, if you attune like you're doing, you're feeling yourself being impacted on a deep level. So it's not just about odor recognition. It is touching you. Like sometimes I'll feel like crying when I'm having an aromatic experience and I've seen other people cry or just joy bursts, you know, it's, it's really powerful. And it goes to that deep level, not just like, oh, it smells like X. It's so much deeper. It's so much deeper. And it actually takes you to that place where that memory occurred. Yeah. So that scent you are having, what is that scent right now? It's, this is rosemary essential oil. Oh, you know, and I love rosemary. I, I love peppermint. I love so many scents. And it, it really takes me to where I first experienced it. Mm -hmm. Although rosemary takes me to the place where I feel like fresh, warm bread with rosemary. Uh, <laughs> delicious. delicious. I love a good, a good focaccia. I, love, yeah, I was just going to say that one of my favorite is focaccia with the mm. fresh rosemary. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I totally agree with you. But uh, as humans, we are so conditioned with our all of our senses. But here's the funny thing. Okay, true, true admission. My, I love scents. I love lavender. Um, it helps me re really relax. Mm -hmm. Eucalyptus, relax. But there have been some scents in different points of my life where it aggravated things. And so I want you to explain why maybe you you don't know but why would certain certain scents aggravate stuff this is twofold and this is so fun because i just was at the rubin museum before and there was a thing about scent and if you don't mind i might read the picture oh, yeah. i took well, go ahead of the thing um but one thing is that literally some chemistry in the aroma can be irritating to your mucosa irritating to your trigeminal nerve and literally irritating on the body that way like imagine smelling ammonia this is an extreme yeah but that's literally really irritating there's this you know like or dislike or not but there's the hedonic sense of us liking or disliking something maybe something reminds you of something that's in your subconscious that you can't place Maybe culturally, that was just some part of the chemistry is like, that's disgusting. I don't want to smell that. But with essential oils, we're always focusing on a very particular subset of plants and chemicals. So when we talk about aromatherapy specifically, we're always talking about essential oils. And there's a like a chemical language there. And we're not talking about perfume or fake scents or synthetics yeah. or stuff that has like sulfur in it or nitrogen proteins it's generally um to talk nerdy the terpenes and hydrocarbons we're talking about so uh i want to just go back to this quote i literally i'm so tickled this is coming up about yeah. scent and perception yeah um again a shout out to the rubin museum uh in manhattan here on 17th street so this uh placard in an exhibit it's about your senses. And if I could read this, let go of attachment. And this had to do with scent. According to psychology, attachment can create powerful bonds. But in the Buddhist worldview, attachment is a cause of suffering. It can appear as a sense of infatuation or craving, whether it brings us joy or harm. Imagine a smell that you love or hate. Just thinking about it might trigger a memory or emotional reaction. Correct, right? Um, the strong thoughts and feelings you attach to a stimulus, like a scent, whether new or familiar, may make it difficult to respect someone else's dissimilar experience. Now, that's super powerful because one thing uh, my attention was drawn to in studying aromatherapy and teaching is scent is chemistry and it's chemical communication. There is no good or bad, unless we're talking about you know, feces or something that's really harmful. It's cultural. It's it's a learned thing to say, like, I don't like that because like my grandmother hated the smell or my culture doesn't like the smell. And when that came to my attention, I was like, wow. Because one thing I do now in the garden as the aromatherapist is I try to stay as neutral as possible. 
So if you were to ask me, Amy, what's your favorite flower or scent? I don't have any. So I just I just shared so much information with you. I was so excited oh, you know, that this length. I, I find that I find that so fascinating that you said that because in the perspective of a meditation mindfulness coach, neutrality is so key. And the fact that you have maintained a, a neutrality that these aromas are essentially helping people in different ways, but mm -hmm. you've come up with a mindset of a neutrality. Is it, am I correct? Yeah, to, to the best of my ability, but I've been doing this in this way since 2015, where I try to stay very neutral when smelling. And yeah. I just take notes about this happened in my head, this tickled, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I try to the best of my ability. <laughs> I, I'm just so incredibly fascinated and, and I, I'm falling in love with aromatherapy just by talking to you about all of this. Essentially, I will probably be your lifetime friend just, uh. just trying to learn from you. And I mean that, but tell me, here, here's another thing. Um, I aspire, you know, my, my backyard garden is not yet where it needs to be. It's going to be there one day, <laughs> but um, I would love to learn about uh, what your perspective is for someone who's a novice like myself, who loves to garden, who loves nature. How do I start a mini aromatherapy garden? And uh, given the context of the fact that we're talking about eco-conscious gardening. Yeah. I think that... Um... I'm just pausing because there's a lot to consider and you're already a gardener so you probably are really you know your soil type you know your sun exposure i'm jealous of you because you're in southern california where you can grow things i cannot um but it, the way to here's a funny thing we i live in a little garden my garden my backyard unfortunately um then people who lived in our home before did not create good soil mm. so, so and in the 10 years 10 years i know it's a long run 10 years we've lived lived here we have not yet created better soil because we didn't have a budget for it okay so i don't know what your community is like and the rules of your community but the first thing that comes to mind before we get to plants is planting in pots that's always a good start um raised bed gardening is really great and i have some raised beds i've always tried to garden in raised beds because we have a lot of clay soil on our property yeah. so depending on how well i'm just pausing when you can water but many of the aromatic plants thrive on a neglect sun lean soil that drains well so you might have compacted soil which you don't want so maybe you'll consider some beautiful pots some raised beds where you could put in some nice draining soil. Yeah. And uh, consider that. And that's where I always recommend you start first as a gardener is Nate, not what plants you want. It's like, okay, what's your environment? How can you work with that? And then think of who you want to invite to live there. Cause I don't care what this sounds like to, to people. You're inviting living beings to live. You're, transplanting them right you don't really belong there you're like hey come live here um i'm gonna try to help you do the best you can um but that's a start i want to pause in, uh, in case you have a question oh no no that's actually really helpful um plenty of sun except for we've been having storms currently oh, but that's yeah. not like our normal but we've had huge storms um but just knowing that the raised gardens are okay and then aromatherapy like i would start with even things like mint I, oh my gosh mm -hmm. like mint or peppermint which mm -hmm. goes a long way with even indian cooking mm -hmm. yeah there's so your aromatic garden like you were just saying starts with the edibles uh, and many people might say oh amy you're just talking about an herb garden but that's what it is so many of our aromatic friends are things we eat in flavor with like ginger, thyme, the sages. Um, I love growing patchouli. That's you can make a tea out of that. 
yeah. rose, the rosemary, uh, lemongrass, palmarosa, eucalyptus. There's some things we couldn't grow. I have like myrrh I'm looking at, juniper. Uh, th there's just so many things. Yeah. Would cilantro be considered one? Yes, coriander, cilantro. I, I just grew some last year. Yes. Oh, I just love cilantro. And it's it's so medicinally powerful. Yeah. And the thing in aromatherapy, we often work with the seed. So coriander, which smells so different from the leaf, like yes. so different, right? Yes. And one thing that's part of like the aromatic eco garden is that when you're introducing these plants, they the oils are in a lot of their leaves. Mm -hmm. But one thing I like to do is let them flower because then you're inviting the beneficial insects and you're creating an ecosystem in your our little yards. Yes. And then you'll invite all those things. So if you grow tomatoes, you can grow some herbs that might prevent the tomato hornworm from coming to attack your tomatoes. So you can start to think about, it's called intensive gardening when you're gardening in a raised bed. And then you're thinking about companion planting with herbs and many of the herbs like each other, but you can have a culinary aromatic garden, you know. I, I'm just, I, I can't even, I don't even have enough words to describe how excited I am with what you're describing because I tried the raised garden. My, my okay. father-in-law who passed away a couple of years ago bought me a raised garden and I tried to rate, um, uh, grow a variety of vegetables and herbs. Mm -hmm. And at the time, it was just me alone working in isolation. I think there, are, there needs to be more people like yourself who are educating us. Like, hey, you're not alone. That thing you're experiencing where, you, where you're talking about the insects or whatever that cohabitates with yeah, veggies. Yeah. I had that happen. And I, I was all frustrated. Like, how, how dare they eat my cucumber? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, this the darn cucumber beetle. Yeah. Oh, I was like, I, I, I don't know. I thought I'm doing something wrong. I don't know. I don't have enough skills. But here's a funny thing. A little bit of a side story. But was it a cucumber? Or was it a zucchini? Honestly, I didn't know. Because I had grown a bunch of little things in this tiny little bed. And I cut it one morning, thinking I'm going to make myself a little zucchini thing. It was a it was a cucumber. <laughs> I didn't know, but let's just say that that's how ignorant I was. I just wanted to grow stuff. But now you know. Like that's the beauty of gardening is it's it's always a work in progress. You're never perfect. You never know enough. And you're not the one in charge. <laughs> no. no. And but and I can tell you one thing, and I am sure, uh, I can guarantee 120% you know what's about to come out of my mouth. You know it tastes way better than something out of a market. Oh, yeah. I mean, the flavor of that vegetable I put into my mouth, I didn't have to put salt. I didn't have to put olive mm -hmm. oil on it. It was just fresh, and it tasted like heaven. Yeah. And it smelled yeah, the smell of a fresh cucumber or a fresh zucchini that's yeah. the fresh tomato. Fresh tomato. I, yeah. I just want to share an experience I will never forget about rooftop gardening here in Manhattan. There is an organization called the Bowery Mission. It's one of the oldest uh, places in the United States to start helping homeless people. And I was helping to co-run their rooftop farm. It's on the Bowery. It's no longer there, unfortunately, the gardens. Anyway, we planted arugula. My friend and I planted I love arugula. arugula. Oh. I never tasted arugula like this in my life. We planted it. It was growing on the rooftop. My friend, we harvested it and we bit into it. And I've had arugula salads at expensive restaurants. And oh my gosh, the peppery goodness. And that rooftop down on the Bowery where there's no trees, it's, it's hell, if you don't mind me saying that word. On that rooftop, I saw, because I planted herbs, I saw butterflies, mostly butterflies, bees, and we had delicious vegetables in the oh. middle of this terrible historical place in New York City. I, I, can, I can 
completely in my mind and my palate experience that and i i understand what you're ex articulating because i love fresh salads and that little garden i've had in my lifetime and here's one funny thing i just have to throw out the story is that my mm -hmm. father-in-law he passed away a couple of years ago as i may have just expressed when i visited him in indiana where my husband was raised he had a raised garden and he was really good like really like you know, Midwest, he knew how to do stuff. And um, we had just arrived on a flight and I was exhausted. And he said, what do you want? I'm like, oh, whatever you have. He's like, do you like spicy? I'm like, well, I'm Indian, I love spicy. <laughs> so he got the fresh bell, uh, fresh chili peppers from his garden. Yep. Oh, Fresh tomatoes. And he said he just got feta from a local market. He sliced it all up feta tomato and fresh chili and i'm i'll never forget how fresh delicious that simple experience you can't put a money or price on it no you can't and your aromatic gardening like you're you transported me and thanks for sharing that story like i could just see like envision eating it you can't put money on that so i'm going to go back to you talking about the trails and the eucalyptus like you can't put money on that experience and the plant life and the life force and all that. It's just, it's an experience, right? That's what it is. It's, a, it's an experience. I, I think it's what connects us as human beings. And going back to the bigger topic of mindfulness, I think it gets us to become, allows us to become, becomes more receptive to being mindful of who we really are because we're not just this body we're just not this mind we're connected to something bigger mm -hmm. and thank you for saying that because the being the gardener or the person who loves good food and good experiences it is a reminder that this is not about me when you are working the soil and as a side note consider composting and composting on your property if you can if you're not already um but that reminder like when i go outside and to this day i'm in my early 40s and i'll go and see a bird and i'll be like oh my god or i'll see a hummingbird and i'm like i'm like a kid and that like that openness is that reminder that like I was thinking about my taxes or something and getting down and then suddenly you go outside and you pick some fresh like lemon balm to make a tea and that's part of our regenerative conversations you could go pick your herbs and make teas or season your dinner it's a very childlike experience and a constant reminder that we can laugh and find joy and be mesmerized by the sun by an insect you know, that further creates a relationship with you and our world, right? And it, it, it heals us on such a deep level. I mean, I, I don't know if you've ever been through trauma, but I have plenty. And that trauma gets released each time we have a chance to just connect again. So, yeah. When you share that, are you like connecting can mean so many things, but like connecting with nature because i know that could is just a very healing part to be able to like touch the soil or sit under a tree yeah yeah um for me it's been more recently i have um hypertension probably through past trauma mm -hmm. and ironically you know given the fact that i'm a meditation coach you'd think i'd be above these things but i am not i'm constantly learning and growing and um, a few, several months ago now, several months ago, I started to study about grounding and just touching the earth. And we, have, we are blessed to have a small backyard here in Southern California with grass. And I, in the morning, we've had a rainstorm, so I haven't done it late, lately. Yeah. I take my socks off, I go in the backyard, I walk in the backyard with my bare feet. And I will pull the trees and pull them into my nose and take flowers and 
told him we have a lemon tree and I'll just mm. touch the lemon tree and any vines of flowers it sounds weird but I will <laughs> I will touch them like they were like they know I'm there hello good morning oh I love you so much and I do that because I feel like it's 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 healing me it is you're making me tear up a bit but that is like we should be respectfully as you're doing interacting with the plants and I talk to the plants like I say hello <laughs> to them yeah. yes. I'll say hello to the insects and birds and it's it is healing I and like to... on so many levels it's it's chemistry at work and then so much deeper but it's sorry. so much deeper I think we cannot underestimate the power we have in our relationship with nature. And that mm -hmm. is why I wanted you as a guest, because I, I knew the fact that you were expanding yourself so from such a hard place, connecting with nature. This means so much to me. Yeah. I I want to share something uh, and about this because for years I heard about people like talking with plants and like singing them and learning their songs and I was like wow that's so above my head I, I don't get it and then a couple years ago there's goldenrod a native native to here not so much in California but there probably is goldenrod I don't know but I was harvesting it and just for distillation here and I remember I got a song and it started singing to me and I started to sing it and it's a simple la 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 um, but I was just like, holy cow, like that just happened. Like, yeah. uh, it, it floored me and I never knew what could happen to me. And I realized like, again, that sense of wonder and listening and just trying to, as a meditator, right, clear your head and be there and observe what's happening. And it's so groundbreaking for me but so mundane at the same time because the plants are always singing they're always communicating they're always there it's just us shutting up you know in that head and paying attention well uh, i don't know if you saw that documentary i know we're going a little, a little bit of a tan tangent but i'll send it to you after the podcast okay. um there was a documentary i saw on how mushrooms have a vibration and there's oh. this incredible beautiful vibrational sound and um studies have been done on them so I'll, I'll send you that story but the reason i found it so incredible is that if there's a frequency and you know about if you meditate you know that there's an alpha beta different mm -hmm. meditation frequencies well these frequencies are being emanated by the plants by the mushrooms and these are the frequencies that we are then emanating into our body so i'm a vegetarian and the huge part of it is that you don't want like no no judgment to other people who eat mm -hmm. meat but when you eat meat you're eman you're taking in the frequency of that vibration of that that thing that you're putting into your body yeah. and, uh, and often uh it's a sad frequency it's just, well, you're hurting another soul. And exactly, yeah. I mean, I mean, don't get, I, I do sometimes eat fish and I feel guilty, but I'm, what I'm trying to articulate is that, that that frequency is a sad, harmed frequency. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, I have to bring this up about essential oils because uh, it's similar when you smell an oil that's sad, you can smell that sadness. Like someone really just harvested with machinery and threw a bunch of it into a still and knowing that you get your essential oils and within like 30 minutes to 90 minutes, they're like, bam, we're gonna run that and just get that oil and like next, like, you know, yeah. like a machine. And you can smell that. Oh. You know, and you I-, can, I You I, can, you can. Yeah, well, I remember once, and I, I never really thought about it until you just said it, is that when you take some like leafy greens, the way you chop your leafy greens, you take a knife to it versus mm -hmm. gently breaking it apart with your hands makes a difference. And now it's, it's okay, this is going so deep with you and I. <laughs> like I remember like 
I heard that years ago. And then sometimes I'm in a rush and I'm like, chop, chop, chop. Mm -hmm. And once in a while, my heart's like, no, just gently break the leaves down. And it, it feels like a different experience for the plant as well as for you. Yeah. I know. I love this. I'm, I'm starting to sound like this crazy California girl now. No, no, I'm sorry. I feel like if we're going off tangent, you bring me back. But I'm reminded of a now deceased person I used to volunteer with who is a professional chef. And he's always like, use your hands when you're mixing, use your hands. Like you were saying, like use your hands to shred the vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, Cause you're feeding yourself, you're feeding yourself. right? <laughs> yeah, like, you're, you, what are you doing to your food, right? So yeah. you wanna be involved with your food and not wear gloves and be all sanitized, you know, like yeah. get in there, you know? Because my husband, um, I, one of my favorite things is probably being Indian, I love onions. And mm. whatever he has to deal with onions, garlic, he'll get his gloves on. <laughs> like, yeah. To each their own. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. So, so tell me more about how people can find out more about your oils and how I can learn more about your essential oils. And which one? Here's a recommendation that I'd love for you to leave. Um, mm -hmm. I deal with anxiety, even though I'm a meditation coach, but I have past trauma. What kind of oils do you recommend for um, anxiety? This is a really important question. And it's also a tough one because we have to align the plant with you. So like I might recommend, and when you say past trauma, I want to hold space and two that come to mind. I think vetiver patchouli, rose, geranium, but there's so many. But one thing that's important, and it goes back to something we spoke about, is if you hate the smell, yeah. like physiologically, the oils will do something. But if you don't like it, you're not going to have a good experience. So I just gave you some that came to the top of my head. And if my understanding from India, we have the itars or atars. So I have them right here, vet vetiver and rose itar could yeah. be very nice for you yeah. if that resonates with you. But one thing, if you can, is you, if you could get some samples of those oils I mentioned or go to a local store in the like a hundred mile radius where you can smell, yeah. try to get in there and smell. Be like, you breathe in and try to not have attachment. Breathe in and what happens? Because that's to, to, to help. Because many people work with the citruses but maybe that's not for you yeah. you know so aromatherapy can be and as a practitioner i'm snobby that way it could be very individual yeah but um the first thing that always comes to mind with trauma is the vetiver because it holds it creates a space to hold you yeah and and uh, be grounded in process uh that's kind of its personality um but there's others, I mean, but. Well, that's really good. See. That's, and, and I like the fact that you made it clear that it's very individual because it can change. Yeah. Um, you know, and you have mentioned at some point in our conversation, lemon balm. Lemon balm is known to help with um, cholesterol. Uh, and the thyroid too. Thyroid, and I, I have an underactive thyroid. That's inter interesting. So lemon balm can be interesting for anxiety. And this is the thing about essential oils is um, they're basically, I joke, uppers and downers and some modulators. So it's like, do you want to feel up and peppy or do you need a little space like to start to be a little more subdued into sleep and that really calming so like a good modulating thing I'm thinking about like Atlas Cedarwood right now or Cedrus Diodora, which grows in India as well. Uh, and like vetiver could be interesting, uh, but we'd have to smell that together. Yeah, um, well, we'll probably have a follow-up conversation about the oils and the scents and benefits for sure, you and I offline and I always love to stay connected with my guests so that this is wonderful. I um, will share all of your details in my show notes. 
Is there anything you would like for the guests to know just before we part ways? And I would love to have you back, by the way. I just Thank enjoyed you. conversation so much. It was very deep and very powerful. Thank you. I, this is immense. I love this. I love connecting with people that normally before podcasting, we wouldn't connect. Um, but thank you for asking to share because if you and your listeners want to geek out with me, as I call it, out in my garden, I have videos on my website, nycaromatica.com, and I call them the plant talk videos. So as a gardener, I might be sitting next to spearmint and I will be talking about how it likes to grow. I'll be talking about some like history folklore and then I'll talk about the essential oil part of it. So it's like a pet project. I love it. I absolutely love plant talk. I look to do them continuously. Um, in another pet project, it's super from my heart. It took me over like two years to do. Every month on my podcast, Essential Aromatica, I have a Luna Aroma episode. So I talk about seasonal themes, a guided aromatic experience to share. Uh, so please do check that out. Well, this is all wonderful and I I've learned so much from you and I am definitely want you back in my podcast and I think you're doing some incredible work with your passion <laughs> and it's 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 beautiful because I you're using all of your senses and you're helping people right I mean just you're you're Im fully embodied in what you're doing thank you I yeah it's exciting and it's it's fulfilling and I'm grateful I can be doing this uh, with my life right now. So I, I'm, so, I'm so I'm so honored. And I, I, I'm, well, what's the right word I'm looking for? I think you are so blessed. You're very thank blessed you. to have come upon this path. So thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you, Amy. Have a thank great you, Shilpa. day. Thank you, Shilpa. You too. Thank you.